In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at selection statements. I've already done a basic introduction to select selection statements, which looks at the if-then statement and the if-then-else statement. I recommend you go back and review those if you need a refresher. Uh, I'm going to look now at a more complex version, which is known as a nested selection statement, which is having an if statement within another if statement. To illustrate this, I'm going to start with a, a basic example that I frequently use, which has to do with voting. Now, when we think of voting, usually the first criteria we might think of is, uh, is age. So I'll just create a little simple program, var age, which is an int, and then I'm going to um, put what is your age. and I will get the age. So now I've asked the user what their age is and a simple discrimination between voting ages. If age is greater than or equal to 18, then put you can vote, else put you cannot vote, and if. So with this program, what's it going to do? We declare a variable, we prompt the user for their age, we get their age in a variable called age, which, contain, which is an integer variable. We check and see if they're over 18 or equal to 18, then they can vote, otherwise they cannot vote. So if I go ahead and run this over here in my run window, what is your age? If I put in 21, I am allowed to vote. And if I put in something like 16, I am not allowed to vote. Now that's a simple enough decision, but unfortunately not all decisions are quite so simple. Not all decisions can be based on just one factor. Now there's another factor that might come up with regards to voting, and that would be citizenship. So var citizen, and that one's going to be a string because I'm going to ask the user for a, an answer that is yes or no. So now I'm going to put, and I'm going to be specific here, uh, I'm actually going to say, are you a citizen? And so that being the case, and actually, you know what, let's be a little nationalistic. So I, are you a Canadian citizen? And I'm going to specify yes, no, meaning I'm telling the user that I want a yes, no answer. Are you a Canadian citizen? Yes, no, question mark get citizen. So now I've asked a second question. So this program is basically, it doesn't matter where you're from, this program determines whether or not you're allowed to uh, vote in Canada. So now what we have here put you can vote, well that's just too simple because all we've got is age greater than or equal to 18, you can vote. Now the first thing you might try is you might think, well can't I just reproduce this if citizen equals yes, then put you can vote, else put you cannot vote, and if, and I'll just hit the F2 key to line everything up nicely. You might think, well, that's there, I'm, I'm testing age and I'm testing citizenship, so that should be enough, but I think you'll find if you run something like this, if I say, what is your age? The answer is 21, and are you a Canadian citizen? And I'll say no, just for the sake of argument. Look at this contradictory answer I get. I get a, a message saying I can vote and a message saying I cannot vote. If the person is not 18 years old, or sorry, if, if the person's 18 years old, even if they're 18, that alone does not mean they can vote. We also have to look at whether or not they have the required citizenship. So now we get into what's known as a nested statement. Somehow, we need to, we only need to check this, we only need to check this if the person's 18 years or older. If the person's not 18, why should we even bother checking their citizenship? Because obviously they can't vote. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to cut this code, and I'm where I have right here put you can vote, I can't use such a simple program anymore. Now I have to add some complexity 
and I actually have to, and I'm just gonna once again do the indentation here, the F2 key. So I just, I just added some code and I'm spacing it to make it a little bit clearer, which is basically to say that if the age is 18, uh, now check for citizenship. Because down here, the age was not 18, age under 18, so citizenship does not matter. It only matters, the citizenship, for this particular question about voting, citizenship only matters if the age is greater than or equal to 18. Now, this is uh, the beginning of a very powerful way of coding because of the ability to check more than one thing at a time. But unfortunately, it also has, uh, it has other problems associated with it, which is as you add more and more conditions, to use a nested statement like this to check conditions, visually it can get very confusing. So I'm gonna wrap up this tutorial by adding a third artificial condition and I apologize for this one. I'm gonna, I'm going to go back to the uh, the early 20th century. Actually, not even that early, but far enough back. Put what is your gender? Because there was one point in time where um, uh, women were not allowed to vote in Canada, and so this is uh, uh, this is something that obviously has changed for the better, but. What is your gender? I'm going to, and now I'm going to specify my answer. I'll say M comma F. And I apologize to any of the uh, women or young girls who are who are watching this, but uh, historically, this is uh, this is something we had. I'm just putting it in here so that we can uh, look at what what the effect would be of a third of a third variable. So I'm going to get a, a gender string. And so now, again, we need another condition. And if gender equals M, then put you can vote, else put you cannot vote, and if and again, now what are the conditions you need to be able to vote? You need to be 18 or older, you need to be a Canadian citizen, and if we go back several decades, you also actually have to be a male. So I'm going to take this from here, and again, you can see I'm gonna add it. So if the person is 18 or older, and if the person is also a Canadian citizen, now I'm adding this archaic condition, which is they also have to be male. That leaves all sorts of other ways where you cannot vote. If you're 18 and you're a Canadian citizen, but you're not male, then you're gonna to be told you can't vote. If you're 18 but not a Canadian citizen, you'll be told you cannot vote. If you're, 18, if you're not 18 or older, then you're gonna to be told you cannot vote. But take a look at this code, take a look at this set of nested if statements just running up from here 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 and you can see the indentation is trying to make this manageable each if block each block of statements lines up so the first statement there's the if there's the else there's the end if second block of statements there's the if else end if third block if else end if but that's for three variables what if we're trying to make decisions on even more this gets very confusing very quickly, even for experienced programmers, and there are better structures to allow us to do this, which I will explore in a future tutorial. Let's just go ahead and run this, make sure it works. 21, yes, I'm a Canadian citizen, and yes, I am male, I'm told I can vote. If I fail that last one, 21, yes, Canadian citizen, female, I cannot vote, at least not several decades ago. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna end this tutorial. Look for future tutorials where I, I will revisit this topic and actually improve the overall look of it.